Coming up, they say it's real-world commercialization of autonomous technology. We say, hey, it looks like RoboCop is on patrol. It may just be the offer you want to secure your future. We're in the new space age now. Inventors of a breakthrough in rocket propulsion seek your investment in a process that relies on renewable solar energy. And Will Rogers once said, I love a dog. He does nothing for political reasons. We have a dog tail to wag for your business and investment reasons. Coming up in this edition of SBN, the Small Business Network. Welcome to SBN. I'm Brian DiNovellis. Also in this edition, we'll hear from CPA Rich Lipton, SBN's tax impact expert, with insights into tax rule changes in this, our post-pandemic environment. But first, good news elsewhere in the world of crowdfunding. Start Engine, the 10th fastest growing private company in California, has a major player addition to its investment consulting roster. Kevin O'Leary, known far and wide as Mr. Wonderful by fans of the indelibly ubiquitous Shark Tank, has joined Start Engine as a shareholder and a strategic advisor. Mr. O'Leary joined Start Engine at a crucial time during the country's economic turnaround. He's encouraging companies to raise capital on Start Engine, the largest equity crowdfunding platform in the U.S. Start Engine's founder and CEO, Howard Marks, embodies his company's positioning statement. The future of investing is here. It's easy to see why, since Start Engine has already helped entrepreneuring companies raise funding to the tune of more than $125 million. One of Mark's most daring moves was putting up Start Engine for investment, and to date, more than 8,000 investors took out their checkbooks to buy into Start Engine's well oiled, smooth running vehicle. And so, the partnership with Mr. Wonderful makes all the sense in the world. Plus, quite a few dollars too. That sounds like an excellent start to a winning relationship. And all of us here at SBN wish the best of success to all at Start Engine. Now stay tuned. When we come back, we're taking a closer look at the reasons to invest in machines as a service in the future of law enforcement. You're with SBN, the Small Business Network, TV news for today's entrepreneurs. SBN, the Small Business Network, is a division of Privatel Incorporated and does not sell any of the instruments, goods, or services seen here, nor is it a portal to investment opportunities. Please consult with your financial and legal professionals before making any investment. This concept has been registered with the Writers Guild of America. Another quick reminder from all of us here at SBN. If you or someone you know has ALS, you can go to winningthefight.org for more help and for more information. Thank you. Welcome back to SBN. I'm your host, Brian DiNovellis. Do you remember the movie RoboCop? It was a clever entertainment franchise back in the late 80s that staked an advanced protective device to defend citizens against criminals of every stripe. What was fantasy 30 plus years ago has now become reality thanks to the innovators and entrepreneurs behind Nightscope, a family of autonomous robotic law enforcement devices. Now, before you say, too good to be true, try to realize how the public benefits from bringing Nightscope's products to market. Let's have a look at the product video from Nightscope for your consideration. Henry Ford once stated, if I'd asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Sometimes you just have to create something all new that's never been done before. We're blazing that new trail in law enforcement, physical security, and public safety. The country and Nightscope are both at an inflection point. Self-driving technology, robotics, and artificial intelligence are going to change the world dramatically. And we're right in the middle of it all, here in the heart of Silicon Valley. With only 2 million law enforcement and security professionals trying to secure over 300 million people across 50 states with outdated technology, the ongoing violence across the country will continue unchecked. That is not acceptable, but you can do something about it. Thousands of people from all walks of life have invested in Nightscope's vision, and together, we built an innovative solution that has already started 
to make a difference in society. Main Street investors, Wall Street investors, and Silicon Valley banding together to make a meaningful and positive social impact, and we're just getting started. The future is here, and Nightscope will help us secure it. This is no longer science fiction. We are pioneers defining the future of security. We design, engineer, manufacture our game-changing technology ourselves. That's right, made in the USA. And the exciting part is that the greatest achievement of our life's work are just ahead for us. I'm not sure how many they plan to deploy, but the minimum investment is $1,000. It is staggering to hear there are only 2 million human police covering communities for almost 300 million citizens. We might want to strike a better balance and cut back on risks. There's a lot more to consider if you're interested in investing in Nightscope, and the Small Business Network can help. Just let us know. Contact us here. Info at sbncrowd.com. We can connect you to legal and business investment advisors, including our legal expert, the crowdfunding attorney, Mark Roderick. Remember, financing is available for most small business opportunities, including crowdfunding and franchising. We're back in just a moment with more ideas for your investment interests. You're watching SBN, the Small Business Network. Another quick reminder from all of us here at SBN. If you or someone you know has ALS, you can go to winningthefight.org for more help and for more information. Thank you. Welcome back to SBN. So glad to have you along. I'm Brian DeNovellis. Now, if there's only one thing to know about SBN, it's that we believe in inventions and innovations that lead to progress that benefits investors, of course, and for that matter, the rest of the world. You've seen serious projects ready to launch and maybe even a frivolous effort or two that have people scrambling back to their drawing boards. Nothing wrong with that. Trial and error leads to bigger and better results in the long run. Now let's sharpen our focus for a few minutes and look at a remarkable project, definitely future forward, that could reap great rewards as we get closer to everyday space exploration and travel. Prime Lightworks is making a fully electric spacecraft propulsion system that does not require conventional mass propellant, otherwise known as fuel. With space exploration and planetary science on the rise, Prime Lightworks is eliminating the need for fuel propulsion systems, instead using renewable solar energy. I think for your investment consideration, I should grab a seat rather than gab away. Let's take a closer look at the campaign pitch video for Prime Lightworks. My name's Kyle Flanagan. I'm the founder and CEO of Prime Lightworks. In space, the future of propulsion is sunlight. These days, if you want to move around in space, you need massive engines and fuel tanks. An average satellite is half propellant, which means half of its mass is fuel, and you have to launch that into space. Microwave propulsion can make satellites greener and more cost-effective, and has the potential to increase spacecraft lifetime, reliability, and maneuverability. Planetary Society just launched the light sail, and we now have data proving that electromagnetic propulsion is not only possible, but feasible and real. Now that the solar sail has been proven, we're looking to create a more efficient, fully electric propulsion system. Fuel for satellites is essentially a lifetime issue. As much fuel as you can carry is as long as the life duration that you can have for your satellite. Radio frequency cavities can actually solve this problem by eliminating that need for fuel. A solar sail works by taking the photons emitted from the sun and bouncing it off a sail, much like the wind on a ship. Instead of a photon hitting once, we actually recapture it so it bounces and then bounces again and bounces again. And this provides a higher efficiency from each photon, providing more thrust than the typical solar sail. There are so many great reasons to invest in new space technology. Historically, we have NASA to thank, the Apollo mission, the space shuttle, for solar panels, GPS, materials like Teflon. When we invest in space, we have big impacts back here on Earth. The total addressable market for electropropulsion manufacturing was $170 million in 2019. And at 24% annual growth, that's projected to be $640 million by 2024. And in the long run, investments in renewable propulsion for aerospace could have a broader impact. You know, these are tough times. We've really made an impact on the planet in a negative way. I mean, I love being a SpaceX, I love space, but burning fuel to get there was hard for me. To make space safe for satellites and spacecraft. 
we're looking to build a community who's gonna follow our test and give us feedback, to purchase equity in our company, to invest in our prototype, in our team, in our technology. Whether you're a scientist or an environmentalist, or you think space is cool, I invite you to invest in us at Prime Lightworks and the future of renewable space propulsion. Minimum investment in Prime Lightworks is $199.82. The innovators behind Prime Lightworks want you to know they're setting their course to the future, as evident in these three headlines. They've received 1.8 million seed funding raised from Y Combinator and Angel Investors. Founder and CEO Kyle Flanagan was named to Forbes 30 Under 30 Class of 2020 in Science. Patent pending in the United States and under patent cooperative treaty for its proprietary electromagnetic thruster technology. There's a good deal more to learn about investing with Prime Lightworks and the Small Business Network can help. Drop us a line here, info at sbncrowd.com. We can connect you with business advisors and legal experts, even our own crowdfunding expert, Mark Roderick, known far and wide as the crowdfunding lawyer. Financing is also available for most small business startups, including crowdfunding and franchising. Please let us show you how. Now, please stay tuned. You're watching TV news for today's entrepreneurs, SBN, the small business network. Hi there, I'm Robin Mead. You are not alone if you're feeling like there's so much uncertainty to face right now. And while you're told to stay physically distant from people, it is more important than ever to stay close at heart by reaching out, sending a text, picking up the phone. You can also reach out to NAMI, the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization, because with all that's going on, it's more important than ever to care for each other. Another quick reminder from all of us here at SBN. If you or someone you know has ALS, you can go to winningthefight.org for more help and for more information. Thank you. Welcome back to SBN, the Small Business Network. I'm Brian DiNovellis. Now here's a fun fact you might have missed. In the United States, 36.5% of households own at least one dog. 36.5%. That comes out to roughly 43,346,000 pooches. Let's see if the next franchise on offer perks up your ears and passes the sniff test for your investment. The time may be right to consider investing in Dogtopia, North America's leading dog daycare provider. According to its franchise presentation materials, the $70 billion pet industry is hotter than ever, and Dogtopia is experiencing rapid growth. They have more than 90 locations across North America and are on pace to open 400 centers by 2021. They say they're looking for energetic franchisees to join an ever-growing company. Let's take a look at highlights from the franchise pitch video for Dogtopia. Dogs are the world to us. They give us their all and expect nothing in return. We're a really big deal to them, so they're a really big deal to us. At Dogtopia, we stop at nothing to make sure they're happy, safe, and fulfilled. From our uncompromising safety standards to our extensive Dogtopian training, it matters to us the way it matters to you. Life is too short, even in dog years, to not live it up on the daily. And that's what we do. Hi, I'm Neil Gill, the CEO and President of Dogtopia. The pet industry is the fastest growing sector in North America. And Dogtopia is the fastest growing brand in this sector. As we live up to our noble cause, we believe that every family deserves a dog and every dog deserves daycare. Our purpose beyond profit is to enhance the joy of pet parenthood by creating better canine citizens through safe socialization, exercise and education. We've developed the teams, the tools and the systems with certified training programs and a proven business model of success demonstrated in our daycare centers across North America. This recession resistant opportunity is one of those rare instances in life where you get to do what you love for a living. As we grow Dogtopia across North America, there remains a lot of opportunities in many major markets, but 
that opportunity won't last forever. Now's the time to join an experienced and dedicated team that surrounds you with support. At Dogtober, you'll be in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And that's the real key to our success. So if you're looking for an organization that cares for your dog like their own, treats every day like it's the most exciting day ever, and enables dogs to possibly change our world, then Dogtopia is the business for you. We look forward to hearing from you, and we wish you the best of luck on your journey. Thank you. Still on the leash about owning a Dogtopia franchise? Here are some stats to consider. The typical expenses associated with a Dogtopia startup. Cash required, 200,000. Your required net worth is 1 million. And your total startup investment ranges between 757,000 and 1.5 million. If you're a dog lover, this could be the perfect walk in the park for you, matching your interest in a franchise full of best friends. If owning a Dogtopia franchise has your mind on the ball, the Small Business Network can help. Please let us know by contacting us here. Info at sbnfranchise.com. Financing is available for most small business opportunities, including franchising and crowdfunding. Please let us show you how. You're watching SBN, the Small Business Network. There's a lot more ahead. Stay tuned. Hi there, I'm Robin Mead. You are not alone if you're feeling like there's so much uncertainty to face right now. And while you're told to stay physically distant from people, it is more important than ever to stay close at heart by reaching out, sending a text, picking up the phone. You can also reach out to NAMI, the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization, because with all that's going on, it's more important than ever to care for each other. Hello and welcome back. This is SBN, the Small Business Network. I'm your host, Brian DiNovellis. If you're a regular viewer of our program, you've probably heard me mention SBN's business and legal advisors' names a few times. You may recall seeing Mark Roderick, the crowdfunding lawyer, present his viewpoint, thereby helping us explore the popularity of the fundraising phenomena. More recently, you've heard me mention SBN's tax impact advisor, Rich Lipton of Lipton CPA Associates in Florham Park, New Jersey. Since introducing him on air is long overdue, I took a few minutes to check in with Rich for his perspectives and pursuits in this time of pandemic and new tax laws and rules being written almost every day in support of restoring the U.S. economy. Here's our chat. The first thing that I wanted to talk to you and, and get our viewers to know is to learn a little bit about you and what you do with CPA Associates. We've been in practice 29 years, uh, Lipton CPA Associates. We're a full service CPA firm. We deal with tax, accounting, consulting, and forensic accounting. Now, you know, more than ever, tax planning is crucial. There's so many tax law changes. This is unprecedented. We've never seen in our career this many tax law changes in this short of a time. Now with everything going on, we're getting changes every day and they're getting implemented immediately. So we're, we're working around the clock to put these things in. Okay. Uh, we're talking with Richard Lipton of Richard Lipton CPA and Associates. And Richard, uh, I'm kind of curious if you could tell us a little bit about what a forensic CPA does. A forensic CPA, the certification CFF, Certified in Financial Forensics. It's um, a specialty designation um, only given by the American Institute of CPAs to select CPAs. Accountants are trained to look at numbers. Mm -hmm. Forensic accountants are trained to look behind the numbers. And we have a lot of additional training, a lot of additional experience, interview training, broad experience. We put all these things together, even for good time situations. And we use this knowledge, not only to look at financial numbers that a client gives us, say, okay, this is good. We can put this in a tax return. And maybe, you know, you have a couple other deductions along with it. But the forensics gives us the added skill of talking to the client and getting them to open up and telling us things that they didn't expect to tell us. We actually have a modern office that we answer the questions you didn't know you needed to ask. Although forensic accounting traditionally is known for fraud investigations, business purchases, 
like if somebody's buying a business or investing in a business, mm -hmm. um, whether it's crowdfunding or something of that nature, they'll call us in to do due diligence on something to make sure it's really what they're thinking it is with the primary concern on the, you know, the CARES Act and the stimulus and basic business survival. So what are you advising them to do during this time to, pro to protect their interests? So one of the things we're advising our clients, because the first thing people do, we went through this with the 08 recession, is they say, I have to cut costs. And they'll say, I want to cut my labor costs. And I'm going to have three people in this department. I'm going to cut it down to one. And they'll say, well, that one person will work three times as hard. You know, they're not going to risk losing their job. Well, they're not going to risk losing their job. But the risk is that there's no checks and balances there of somebody watching over the other. Another expression we go by is, when you dim the lights, don't shut them. What that really means is you can trim some of your expenses in business. And those are the things that we go through with the client because if we look at it independently, we're going to take the emotion out of it. Mm -hmm. And when we look at it, we're going to say, okay, well, this is an area of expense you probably shouldn't have had anyway. Even when times were good, you probably didn't care. You had a big company, you had all these overhead, you didn't mind. Now that business is bad, you're going to take a look at it and realize, wait, this is something I don't need. So we're guiding our clients to trim where they should have anyway to survive this. Fortunately, we have this stimulus package, which is out there now, which we did not have in the 08 recession come out as quick. So that is to get people through the short term. And there's some other stimulus packages being talked about that aren't out there yet. They help survive, get businesses through the rest of it. And then when things reopen, we want our clients to be the survivor out there and be stronger than their competition who thought they could cut costs everywhere. Rich, are any of your clients asking you what is the best thing that they should do with that stimulus money, whether it's 1200 or 2400 Yes. We're getting a lot of questions on it. The most questions we're actually getting is on what they call the PPP program, which is the Payroll Protection Program. Because mm -hmm. um, that's the one with businesses. And we're getting a lot of questions on that one how to apply for it, what's included with it, and how to use the money. Because that money's coming through as a loan. And it's not necessarily forgiven. That, it's coming through as a loan that has to be repaid. It's up to the business owner to utilize those funds in certain ways that it can then be forgiven. Okay. And if they don't use it correctly, they're going to have to pay it back with the nominal interest rate. So that's really where most of the questions are coming from and which of the stimulus packages to use and which is best for them. Because sometimes if you use one, that will preclude a business owner from using another one. The last question for me, Rich, is in terms of investors, uh, these are unprecedented times. We've talked about that. What advice do you give to people looking to invest that money right now? Well, a couple things. One is for people looking to invest, now may be a good time. Because as you know, the markets are down. For publicly held companies, for smaller privately held companies, they're going to have a difficult time borrowing and a difficult time raising cash from people. They may have to lower their price, the buy-in prices. So if somebody has cash, it could be a great opportunity to buy into a small company that needs it. I think coming out of this, it's going to be a good opportunity for business startups again, because a lot of businesses aren't going to be surviving this. There's going to be little holes, little niches of where startups can go in with a low overhead and survive. So that's the part for the business owner. The part for the investor that I advise is to really be careful and do your due diligence and have a professional look it over with you. So in other words, if a person's investing in a business, regardless of what it was, and they show them financials, they said, this was our financial last year, we earned this amount, and this is what our net profit was, and this is what our projections were. We have to look at when these projections were done and when the net profit was. Because if this was the end of 2019, and that's what most people are using right now, right. that's all changed. So we have to look at it carefully and see when are they using these things? What are they factoring into it? And even if they're giving us current projections, what's the reality to it? Somebody looking to raise money might be totally straightforward and give all the pros and the cons. Other people may just make it a very rosy picture. 
what we do for our vest store clients is look at the project they're going into and we do a full due diligence to see what they should be investing in and if it's worth it or how much it is worth. All right, Richard Lipton, thank you for your time. Thank you. Free professional advice from Richard Lipton of Richard Lipton CPA and Associates. We'll talk to you soon and look forward to hearing more advice from you, Richard. Very good. Thank you. We'll be seeing more of Rich in the program going forward. In fact, you can play a part in our future Q&A segments. Email your questions, either by sound memo or text message to us here, and we'll go over the tax impact with our contributor, Rich Lipton of Lipton CPA Associates. Thanks, Rich. Now, please stay with us. Coming up next, one more project on a tight deadline to finish a successful raise, along with another one that got away fully funded and on to its founder's next phase. You're watching SBN, the Small Business Network, TV news for today's entrepreneurs. Another quick reminder from all of us here at SBN. If you or someone you know has ALS, you can go to winningthefight.org for more help and for more information. Thank you. This is SBN, time for a quick hit that needs a shot of support and one that got away with everything and more of their expectations. Fuchsia Shoes, purveyor of handmade ballet flats, nabbed just over $60,000 from 54 investors. For such a specific investment, it could have gone either way, an easy buy or a tough sell. The artisan sector is part of a much larger global creative economy that if it were a country, would already be equal to the fourth largest economy in the world, with the fourth largest workforce. Fuchsia works with these artisans directly, eliminating the need of the middlemen, starting with their existing products and evolving them such that they fit the luxury category. We made the shoes ultra comfortable, durable, and functional by adding rubber soles, soft padding to the footbed while using premium quality raw material sourced ethically. As it turns out, it's a hit and Fuchsia walks away with the green. Good luck. Now here's one that's still trying to reach its goal. You may want to give it one more look for your investment objectives. I'm talking about the Hitch Hotel. Maybe it's an idea ahead of its time. There's no telling, but there is still watching. Let's give Hitch Hotel another look. Introducing the Hitch Hotel Traveler, the next level in adventure simplicity. The Traveler is considered one of the most compact trailers in the marketplace today. Not only can you carry more stuff, but when you're done, simply back into your garage, carport, or parking space and release, roll, retract. The Hitch Hotel Traveler. Your room is ready. Minimum investment in Hitch Hotel is $235. Could be just what the doctor ordered for your summertime post-pandemic portfolio. If you have any questions about equity crowdfunding for the Hitch Hotel, the Small Business Network can help. Please let us know by contacting us here. Info at sbncrowd.com. We can connect you to legal and business investment advisors, including SBN's tax impact expert, Richard Lipton of Lipton CPA Associates. Let Rich show you what he means when he says, Lipton CPA Associates answers questions you didn't know you needed to ask. And if you have a big idea, an invention or an innovation you'd like to test out in the marketplace, let us know. Because as we like to remind you, financing is available for most small business opportunities, including product development, crowdfunding, and franchising. For more information, contact us here. Info at connectsbn.com. We're back with more after this short break. You're watching SBN, the Small Business Network. Another quick reminder from all of us here at SBN. If you or someone you know has ALS, you can go to winningthefight.org for more help and for more information. Thank you. That's going to wrap things up today. We hope you saw something that played to your interest for small business investment, or at least something presented that brought you a laugh or a smile. We invite you to come back and watch again next time, and we thank you for making us a part of your regular viewing habits. Until next time, 
good health, good heart, and good investments. Thank you from all of us here at SBN, the Small Business Network. TV news for today's entrepreneurs.